Hare Krishna, Jaya Jaya Shri Chaitanya, Jaya Nityananda, Jaya Advaita Chandra, Jaya Gaura Bhakta Vrinda, Jaya Jaya Shri Chaitanya, Jaya Nityananda, Jaya Advaita Chandra, Jaya Gaura Bhakta Vrinda, Jaya Jaya Shri Chaitanya, Jaya Nityananda, Jaya Advaita Chandra, Jaya Gaura Bhakta Vrinda. We continue reading from Chaitanya Charitamrita. We are on Adi Lila chapter 7. We have been reading the Purport to text 128, Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swamishla Prabhupada, and we continue to read. This is, um, we are reading the glories of Omkar. Akare nochyate Krishna sarva lokai kanayakaha Ukare nochyate radha makaro jiva vachakaha Omkar is a combination of the letters A-U-M. Akare nochyate Krishna, the letter A, Akara, refers to Krishna, who is Sarva Lokeka Nayakaha, the master of all living entities and planets, material and spiritual. Nayaka means leader. So Krishna is the leader. Krishna is the leader. He is the supreme leader. Nityo Nityanam Chetanas Chetananam. Krishna akare nochyate Krishna. Krishna is sarva lokeka nayakaha. He is the master of all living entities and planets, material and spiritual. Now we may cry about it. We may sulk about it. We may say, I don't believe it. But it does not change the fact. Our beliefs don't change the fact that Krishna is God. He is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The letter U, Ukar, indicates Srimati Radharani, the pleasure potency of Krishna. So, okay. So, A refers to Krishna, the Supreme Lord, the Supreme Leader, and U refers to Srimati Radharani. She is Krishna's own internal pleasure potency. She is she is the energy by which Krishna uh, uh, feels pleasure, by which he enjoys. And M, Maka, Maka indicates the living entities, Jivas. Thus, Om is the complete combination of Krishna, his potency, and his eternal servitors. So M refers to the Jivatma. We are the Jivatma. We are the um, servants of Krishna. We are the marginal potency of Krishna. So when we say Om, refers to Krishna, his internal potency, and his servitors. In other words, Omkar represents Krishna, his name, fame, pastimes, entourage, expansions, devotees, potencies, and everything else pertaining to him. So Krishna and his name are not different. Krishna and his leelas, pastimes, are non-different. Krishna and his entourage are non-different. And so Omkar represents all this because Omkar is the sound representation of Krishna. Similarly, the Hare Krishna mantra. Hare Krishna mantra is non-different from Krishna himself. As Chaitanya Mahaprabhu states in the present verse of Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, Sarva Vishwadham. Omkar is the resting place of everything, just as Krishna, as Krishna is the resting place of everything. Brahmanohi Patishtaham. So Krishna is the foundation on which everything is uh, coming from. Everything is coming from Krishna. Now, because everything is coming from Krishna, someone might say, oh, then Krishna does not exist anymore. Why? Because he had to transform himself to become everything. No, he doesn't need to. Krishna's energy transforms and yet he himself stays uh, as the Supreme Person. Everything is coming from him, yet he has not become everything. He is still enjoying himself in Golok Vrindavan with the Brajvasis. That is the point we need to understand. That God, he has so many potencies 
And just because he's expanded everywhere doesn't mean that he's not in one place. Then we are putting our limitation on God. So the Mahavadi philosophers consider many Vedic mantras to be the Mahavakya, a principal Vedic mantra, such as Tattvam Asi Chandogya Upanishad, Idam Sarvam Yad Ayam Atma, and Brahmedam Sarvam Brahad Aranyaka Upanishad 251. Atme Vedam Sarvam Chandogya Upanishad 725 2, and Neha Nana Stikinchana Katha Upanishad 2111. That is a great mistake. Only Umkar is the Mahavakya. All these other mantras that the Mayavadis accept as the Mahavakya are only incidental. They cannot be taken as the Mahavakya or Mahamantra. The mantra Tattva Asi indicates only a partial understanding of the Vedas, unlike Umkar. So if I say, if I'm taking some mantra, from the Vedas and thinking that this is the main mantra, then I am being mistaken. I have to understand what is the Maha Mantra. Each mantra has its potency. Each mantra has its own potency, but the Maha Mantra has the greatest potency, the highest potency. Like the bulb, some bulb has five watts, some has 10 watts, some has 100 watts. Now, if I take a bulb of 5 watts, thinking that this is a bulb of 100 watts, who is to, to be blamed? Me, myself. I didn't do my research properly. So they cannot be taken as Samhavakya or Ma Mantra. The Mantra, okay. Uh, so the Omkar represents the full understanding of the Vedas. And that's why it's called the Maha Mantra. Therefore, the transcendental psalm that includes all Vedic knowledge is Omkar Pranava. So Omkar includes all Vedic knowledge. We were hearing that Omkar and Hare Krishna is the same, but we still chant Hare Krishna. We don't chant Omkar. Why? Because in this age of Kali, we have been given the Hare Krishna mantra, the, the the Upanishads, the Vedas state that in this age of Kali, we are not qualified to chant the Omkar. We are so fallen and so we have been given the Hare Krishna Mantra to chant. That's why I said Hare Nam, Hare Nam, Hare Nam, Kevalam, Kalo Nasteva, 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 Gatir Anyatha. And Lord Chaitanya personally gave us this mantra. So following him, we are his followers. So we chant. Hare Krishna Mahamantra. Aside from Omkar, none of the words uttered by the followers of Shankaracharya can be considered the Mahavakya. They are merely passing remarks. Shankaracharya, however, has never stressed chanting of the Mahavakya Omkar. He has accepted only Tattvam Asi as the Mahavakya. Imagining the living entity to be God, he has misinterpreted all the mantras of the Vedanta Sutra with the motive of proving that there is no separate existence of the living entities and the supreme absolute truth. So if I take the mantra Tattvam Asi, I am him, I am God, then I am misunderstanding all the mantras. The Vedas. I am misinterpreting all the Vedas. If I think that I am God, that I have no separate existence, that after I get liberation, I'm going to become God and I don't exist anymore, that is my imagination. That is a misinterpretation. This is similar to the politician's attempt to prove non violence from the Bhagavad Gita. So someone may say, oh, Bhagavad Gita says be non-violent. But no, this is no. Krishna is violent to demons. And to attempt to prove that Krishna is not violent is ultimately to deny Krishna. So we cannot say Krishna is non-violent. Krishna is preaching non-violence. No, he's not telling Arjuna, don't fight. Oh, does it matter? These people have... Uh, they are aggressors. They are in harm to you and your family, but does it matter? Don't fight. No, Krishna doesn't say that. He says you fight. You fight because this is what you need to do. It's your duty and you do it for my satisfaction. 
So if we say, oh, Bhagavad Gita teach non-violence, we are misinterpreting the Bhagavad Gita. We, if we say Krishna is not violent, we are denying Krishna. We are completely denying Krishna. As such, explanations of the Bhagavad Gita are absurd. So also a Shankaracharya's explanation of the Vedanta Sutra. And no sane and reasonable man will accept it. You know, so if, if we just make up things and say, oh, Bhagavad Gita is like that, we are misinterpreting the Bhagavad Gita. So we have to understand the Bhagavad Gita from the devotee. Hear it in the parampara system, as just now we were speaking in, in the Bhagavatam reading. So at present, however, the Vedanta Sutra is misrepresented not only by the so-called Vedantis, but also by other unscrupulous persons who are so degraded that they even recommend that sannyasis eat meat, fish, and eggs. You know, so we, we have to see, you know, now everyone thinks, oh, I, I can comment on Bhagavad Gita. You know, we are thinking I'm a great scholar. I, I, I know, I know. I can comment on the Bhagavad Gita. I'm qualified. And we make such comments which are totally absurd. Totally absurd. And also one of this is thinking that sannyasis can eat meat, you know, or fish or eggs. In this way, the so-called followers of Shankara, the impersonalist Mayavadis are sinking lower and lower. How can these degraded men explain the Vedanta Sutra, which is the essence of all Vedic literature? So if my consciousness is not, is not clear, how can I understand things as they are? And how can I speak about things as they are? If I myself don't understand it, then, so because I don't understand the truth, I'm not going to speak the truth. And because I am misguided, I'm going to misguide everyone else. That is a point to be considered. Who am I hearing from? What is the qualification of this person I'm hearing from? You know, because Vedanta Sutra, it is, it, is, it, it is the essence of the Vedas. Krishna says, Vedas chasarve aham eva vedya. By all the Vedas, I am to be known. So by reading the Vedas, by hearing about the Vedas, by chanting the Vedas, if we do not come to understand that Krishna is God, then we have simply, merely wasted our time. So we need to hear more and more about Krishna from the authorities and chant his name. I'll just try to finish this. Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has declared Mayavadi Bhasya Shunile Haya Sarvanash. Anyone who hears commentary on the Vedanta Sutra from the Mayavad school is completely doomed. As explained in the Bhagavad Gita, Vedascha Sarva Aham Eva Vedaya. All Vedic literature aims at understanding Krishna. That is the aim. Why do we have the Vedas? To understand that we are not God, that Krishna is God, that we have a loving relationship with him. That is the reason we have the Vedas. Mayavad philosophy, however, has deviated everyone from Krishna. Therefore, there is a great need for the Krishna consciousness movement all over the world to save the world from degradation. You know, we have, we have come so far away from God. We have forgotten God completely. So we need to understand Krishna and we need to give this knowledge of Krishna to others so that everyone can go back home, back to Godhead. Everyone is a part and parcel of Krishna. Doesn't mean, oh, I'm a part and parcel of Krishna and let everyone and, and everyone else is not. No, each and every one of us have a loving relationship with Krishna. And so we need to understand um, this knowledge, follow the instructions. We need to become Krishna conscious and help others become Krishna conscious. Every intelligent and sane man must abandon the philosophical explanation of the Mayavadis and accept the explanation of Vaishnava Acharyas. One should read Bhagavad Gita as it is to try to understand the real purport of the Vedas. So we should hear from the Vaishnavas, from the Acharyas. We should not hear from the unqualified people. Just as if I want to become 
qualified. I want to become expert in any one med, uh, one material field. I want to become an expert lawyer. I need to go to a proper law school, which is certified by the law authorities. I need to learn from the proper teachers who are qualified to teach me. I need to learn the textbooks which are, which are certified by the board of law. I need to read those textbooks. I can't just pick up anything and then pretend I'm a lawyer. Then I'm just wasting my time. So we need to hear, hear from the authorities and chant the holy name and go back home, back to Godhead. Is that okay? Yes. So we'll stop here for today. Thank you so much for listening and joining in. Shriman, uh, Shri Chaitanya Charitamrita ki jai, Shri Prabhupada ki jai, Gaur Vakta Vindh ki jai. Hare Krishna.